Today we will settle the debate between cooking techniques. Turning a steak only once versus turning it often. When I cook a steak, I avoid moisture on the surface because it prevents proper browning in the formation of a tasty crust. Moisture can cause the steak to steam instead of sear, leading to uneven cooking and a less flavorful steak. Before cooking, pat it dry and let it come to room temperature. And when I say room temperature, I don't mean a mere 20 minute cameo outside the fridge. I'm talking about a solid few hours. But hey, if you're in a rush, side those steaks into a Ziploc bag and let them lounge in a lukewarm bath to reach room temperature. We've all been there. And when I say lukewarm, I mean between 20 to 25 degrees C, which is 68 to 77 degrees Fahrenheit. Look how beautiful these steaks look. Ribeye, boneless ribeye, fat, beautiful steaks. Moisture's your enemy, get rid of the moisture. I now brush them with olive oil because it helps the even searing and acts as a great flavor. The oil also prevents the steak from sticking to the cast iron pan. Helps my seasoning cling better and keeps some of the steak juices intact. Plus, recent science says olive oil can handle high heat. Now generously season both sides with salt and pepper. Get your pan blazing hot until it smokes. Just start smoking. Once you lay the steaks in, Dial the heat back lightly to a medium high setting. On my left, we have the single flip method, the one turn wonder. On the right, it's the rapid flip approach, flipping every 30 seconds. The right steak will dance in the pan, flipping frequently, while the left one basks, turning just once when it's cooked halfway through. I'm aiming for 52 to 54 degrees C. We can push here and poke there, but the most reliable way to achieve that perfect state is with a thermometer. Shooting for 52 to 54 degrees C. Remember, with carryover cooking, the steak continues to cook a bit even after being removed from the heat source due to the retained heat. And if you're on the lookout, for a top-notch thermometer, there's a link below with a sweet 30% discount. Once out of the pan, transfer them onto a wooden chopping board for the next crucial step. So our one flip wonder took an extra one and a half minutes to cook compared to our regular flipper. Now, in reality, 30 seconds is pretty tough, but if we could target a minute, I think we'd get a very similar result. But wait and see the results but I think this one is slightly thicker that's the only reason it took that little bit longer got the time on I'm hanging out for seven minutes it's gonna be a long seven minutes the results are in ladies and gentlemen now you've seen both sides of the flipping debate with a single flip many believe you get a constant crust and it's straightforward However, frequently flipping might offer a more even cooking, especially for thicker cuts. Personally, I reckon both methods have their pros. Ultimately, it's about your preference and the steak in question, but regardless of flip frequency, I always trust a meat thermometer to gauge doneness. Let me know in the comments which method you are gonna swear by or already do. Wow, it's been about 10 minutes since we cut it. You can really see the difference, can't you? Our one flip wonder, our multiple flip, the crusts are good on both of them without any doubt whatsoever. 30 seconds is kind of a hard ask when you're standing at the barbecue having a beer and keeping people's drinks topped up. But go for a minute flip because you can get your beer and top up and you'll be back in time for a minute to flip, right? And you can see you've got a way more even cooking as opposed to this guy over here. I'm gonna make a sandwich. What do you reckon? Got some bread, got some caramelized chili. Look at that. Beautiful. I think one's enough. And a couple of mini reds on top. Now 
Now that is what I call a sandwich. A ribeye extravaganza. See you on the next video.